Hi, welcome to this episode of Altitude. With me, I have Bailey Hadnot. Bailey is a civil engineer. Welcome to the show, Bailey. How thank are you, you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Fantastic, fantastic. So thank you for taking your time out yeah. of your busy schedule. No problem. I know with the, the Twin Cities traffic, it's hard to get from uh, those far out engineering <laughs> companies to get over to see us here in St. Paul at SPNN Studios, so we appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So Bailey, you know, today's show is really focused in on youth and high school students and mm -hmm. maybe some returning uh, adults back to the work world. And so our goal is to find out a little bit about you and to understand what is the career, your education, your lifestyle. Okay. So why don't we start off by talking a little bit about your education. Mm -hmm. Start from the beginning. Okay. Um, I'm a civil engineer by trade. I went to University of Iowa in Iowa oh. City for five years uh, to get my engineering degree in 2011. Um, during that time, I did a couple internships, co-ops, and then ended up um, in Minneapolis for my first full-time job at Bar Engineering. Wow. So, yeah. Very prestigious uh, company. Oh, thanks, yeah. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so, at, at Bar, what do you do at Bar? So, my, my title is Environmental Engineer. Mm -hmm. um, we have a business unit called Assessment and Remediation, mm -hmm. which means we assess situations that are contaminated, like contaminated sites for soil, um, mm -hmm. contaminated drinking water, oh. wastewater, um, mm -hmm. air pollution, and then we work with our clients to solve those problems. So remediating things like lead in your water or um, solids in your air or maybe a contaminant in your soil. We help them design solutions to remove those from their um, systems or properties. Wow, that's really cool. That's yeah. really important work too, especially yeah. in light of all the major issues we've had in Flint, Michigan with the yep. water crisis and yep. what, I, what we've learned beyond that in the South and all across the United States mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. the pockets of areas. So mm -hmm. looping back to education, did you always want to go into civil engineering and do what you're doing now? Or how did you get from, you know, young Bailey to being <laughs> where you're at now? Yeah. So young Bailey was a tree hugger is what I like to call her. Tree hugger. Yes. Oh, I haven't heard that in a long time. That's my, what are you doing using yeah. my dad? That's my generation. Yeah. It's, that's my mom called me when I was a kid. Okay. I was very adamant about recycling and like Ooh. picking up trash on the street and okay. like sea animals. Um, and Ooh. originally young Bailey wanted to be a marine biologist and okay. work with like dolphins and train dolphins and work with like water animals. Uh-huh. That didn't pan out. Um, so then I ended up taking a class in high school called engineering physics. Hmm. And that was the first time I was offered at my high school. Um, I went to mostly black high school in Chicago. So okay. it wasn't very common. Took that class and I loved it. I love working with my hands and like building things and asking questions, wow. all that stuff. Um, then I did that for a semester and I was like, okay, now I'm gonna be an engineer. That's just, I decided that from that class. And then I applied to a couple schools, um, got some scholarships and then ended up at Iowa for an engineering degree. That's and then within fantastic. that, um, you could do like civil engineering, biomedical engineering, mm -hmm. mechanical engineering, and I chose civil. And then that was also environmental at the same time. Sure. So that's what I so ended you, up doing. So you're telling me you're more than a hard hat and a shovel, right? Yes, it's, I'm more than a hard hat that, that is and a shovel. That, I have learned that stereotype, <laughs> that generalizations. You're more yes. than a hard hat and a shovel. I do have a hard hat and a shovel, but it's not all <laughs> I am. I do more than just that. So. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I know I ran into uh, a good friend of mine is actually with the Conservation Corps. She's on the board. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I know that uh, that was one of the terms that came up. She didn't say it. And, you know, we'll have to strike that from the show. But yeah. uh, it was actually hilarious. Everybody started chuckling, going like, oh, except me. You know? <laughs> not me. Yeah. So, wow. So you're telling me you came off of the mean streets of Chicago, <laughs> hugging trees that. and the green effect, you know, yeah. and recycling. And yeah. then all the way to here in Minnesota with your degrees mm -hmm. and being able to make a difference on society through the work that you do. I hope so. Yeah. 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 No, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, one, one other thing will stick around the career aspect of it is being African-American female mm -hmm. and I, had, I don't believe I had even been awakened to the fact that there were black civil engineers. Because in my mind, they, you know, I was always seeing people in ditches and hard hats and shovels, <laughs> right? And they were usually yeah. male. They were usually Caucasian. Yes. And they, um, it just was a thing, right? Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how you adapted to working in your career. And were there any things you can share with our audience that, you know, be prepared for? Um, Communication or? Anything. Anything. Yeah, it's sure. wide open. Yeah. Sure. Um, so I, was, I went to Iowa, obviously, for school, mm -hmm. and that's a predominantly white institution, PWI, mm -hmm. which most people know. Um, and there was one other black engineer who was a woman who was also a civil engineer. Hmm. So there was two of us out of a class wow. of like 
200 people. That was my first culture shock within engineering of like, okay, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe I can't see someone who looks like me in this process. Maybe I shouldn't go all the way. Mm -hmm. Those were my first thoughts when I first got to college. Um, and then from there, I just kind of got used to it, mm -hmm. honestly. It became the norm of being the one person of color in your class, mm -hmm. the one person of color at office hours. It just became the reality that mm -hmm. I face every day. And then that prepared me for my job now, which I'm the only black engineer at my company, mm -hmm. female, mm -hmm. or any, any gender, honestly. So wow. it just prepared me for the reality. I know it's not a great reality, but mm -hmm that experience in college prepared me for the, the real world, so to speak, and how to sure. navigate that. So, and I can, I can relate to that from the male side of it and being from, even from here, but you've done some pretty incredible things to make a change in that particular arena too. And if we'll talk a little bit about, I think when we actually first met, it was either at the uh, Minneapolis STEM Expo or it was at Minneapolis North. Mm -hmm. And I know you were there with an organization. Uh, mm -hmm. You can share that organization. Mm -hmm. But what you were trying to do at North. Um, and also, too, I know that you've worked, you, you are in a group of other female engineers and IT technologists and mm -hmm. practitioners are trying to make a change, creating a pathway for more um, persons of color, female, young women of color. Mm -hmm. So you could, can you share a little bit about your work in that particular space? Yeah, sure. So in my free time, I'm not a big engineer, um, I help with a robotics team at Hiawatha High School. Mm -hmm. I call the Robo Lobos. Lobos right. is wolf in Spanish. Um, I know. So <laughs> My uncle yeah, goes by El go. Lobo. Yeah. There you go. That's I funny. have many years of Spanish, although yeah. I can't speak a lick now. <laughs> but okay. Anyway. So um, I'm like a, I'm a co-coach of that team. Mm -hmm. And they started about two years ago. It's mostly Hispanic and um, black high school. So we mm -hmm. help them and I volunteer twice a week, three times a week and just coach them with like project management skills, how to build things, how to plan for your strategy of like how you're gonna make your robot, um, team coordination, team building. Mm -hmm. I help with that aspect of things. And then we have engineers from Minnesota or U of M that come in and teach them about like mechanics of mm -hmm. Um, voltage and circuits and programming mm -hmm. and all those great things that I don't really do but I can help with like the management side of things mm -hmm. and then I also see myself as like a model for those students in those classes that maybe have not Absolutely. seen black engineers or engineers of color at all and maybe like have a model for them to to look up to yeah so. and tell us a little bit about the organization that you belong to and been a leader in. yes so it's called Natch Site Black Engineers or NSBE for short mm -hmm. um, I got involved in them when I was first in college mm -hmm. I joined them in my sophomore year to find that community and that tribe of people that were having the experience that I had of being in a person of color in your degree in your class mm -hmm. and you're the only one so I joined NSBE um, my sophomore year and then I rose up to the ranks to be the president of NSBE for about two years when I was in college on um, the collegiate chapter and once I moved here I became involved with NSBE Twin Cities professionals and then also became the programs chair of that organization mm -hmm. where I helped run the robotics team and helped do mentoring programs at the University of Minnesota mm -hmm. and also helped with um, professional development events for our members. Fantastic. So, yeah. That's wonderful. Thanks. <laughs> and then I think one of the most recent ventures that you have is with the Minnesota STEM Partnership and mm -hmm. the Women in STEAM. Share a little mm -hmm. bit about what you think the expectations and the goals are going to happen there. Yeah. yeah. So, you're, I mean, you're, doing you're, a great the, you're job. in charge of it. So, well, <laughs> you're my guest, though, so I have to <laughs> defer true. to you. So. so, from my understanding, I just know that I have been called um, a unicorn of sorts because I'm a mm -hmm. black engineer mm -hmm. in STEM and I'm a rarity in that field yeah. um, and my my job within that group is to raise awareness mm -hmm. of who can apply to a scholarship called aspirations I believe that mm -hmm. and then that gives them a pathway towards success yeah. that's how I understand it yeah no that's that's perfect okay. and try to identify uh, women of color in particular right. yes. young women of color mm -hmm. from various high schools mm -hmm. and by the way if there's any young ladies of color out there I got the camera <laughs> <laughs> Young ladies of color, be sure that you apply to aspirations.minnesotastempartnership.org. So shameless plug here, right in the middle of your interview. <laughs> no, How horrible no problem. Be. So, but the most important thing that you're doing, I think, is actually reaching back to those young ladies. Mm -hmm. And when we first met, we were at Minneapolis, well, when we met in that 
in that arena mm -hmm. was with an organization, I think, Sisters in Technology. Yes. And mm -hmm. you were you came in to speak with them mm -hmm. and help coach them and, and have worked with them. Yeah. You and the Nes local Nesby chapter. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we applaud you for all of your hard work. Thank you. Yeah. I think it's, it's really important. It's necessary to do, because I didn't have that done for me. Mm -hmm. and I would have liked that. And I think it's really just important to do that for the people behind me. So let's we'll just doors. stay in that <laughs> one particular area. So if, if uh, I'm a young female uh, woman mm -hmm. in high school mm -hmm. and I see you come into my classroom, I don't know you, I've never met you, you know, I might have seen you in the hallway, what should I do to reach out to you? I mean, is it okay if I just say, hey, I don't know anything, would you teach me? Or share a little bit about how approachable you are and mm. what you would give advice to a young woman. Gotcha. Like, here's this big engineer, you know, <laughs> oh, I can't speak to them. Oh, no, no, it's fine. Um, so I've had people ask for business cards. That's like usually a good tool that I've mm -hmm. had high school kids or high school students do. Mm -hmm. um, they just said, hey, like, I have questions about your job or I have questions about how you got to where you are. Mm -hmm. Can I email you or can I call you? And I've given them out, but no one has really followed up. Uh -huh. So I would say if you ask for a business card, for sure follow up and send them an email or if they have LinkedIn, anything like that, yep. it's for sure, it's it's a big ticket because it's not really um, common for a person in a professional world to kind of reach back to students and then them to follow up. So exactly, and that's you can why stick out. the work you're doing is just incredible. Yeah. So here we have Bailey, civil engineer, making all this wonderful money now that she's <laughs> in her career. So we're gonna we're gonna pass on the education, the career, and talk about some of the fun things real briefly before we wrap up. Okay. So. So what does Bailey do to have fun? I mean, what do you do with all your money? All my money? What money? <laughs> um, so I have student loans, first of all. That's where a lot of my money uh -oh. goes, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Um, when I'm not paying student loans, um, I like to travel. Okay. I went to Scotland recently in May really? to visit a friend. Did you see anybody in the little kilts? I did. Did you? Yeah. yeah it was great. It was cool. so fun. Yeah. So I love traveling. I'm going to Hawaii in November and then going to Cabo in December to get out of the winter here. So that'll be great. Um, I like to do outside things. Mm -hmm. I'm really into like camping, okay. biking, hiking. Uh, Minneapolis has great breweries. So I just like go to a bunch of breweries and try a bunch of beer. Um, not a bunch of beer, a good amount of beer. <laughs> <laughs> the appropriate amount the based on your height, weight, exactly. and all the scientific measurements. All the dimensions right? that you uh, need. We're going to have to edit that out of this particular <laughs> segment. You know, we do high school kids. Yes. No, just yes. kidding. But, breweries, uh, food trucks, festivals. Um, yesterday they were, they were showing a movie in the park at US Bank Stadium. I just did that with my boyfriend. Yeah. Just like yeah. being outside in the summer is my favorite thing to do because it yeah. gets long winters here. And in the winter, um, skiing, snowboarding. I haven't tried ice fishing, but I'm gonna try ice fishing. Okay. Um, more camping in like cabins. So any, really anything. Hey. And a lot of cooking too. Yeah. I like to cook a lot. So yeah. yeah. And Minnesota has such a great terrain and yeah. weather ecosystem for exactly. us to be able to for enjoy all, all those things. things. Yeah. I used to be a big camper, but then the mosquito <laughs> came and landed and carried me away. So <laughs> one I, mosquito. Yeah, one mosquito. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Bailey, fun. thank you so much. This yeah. has been a truly enjoyable interview yeah. and I thank you for sharing your, your career, your education and your lifestyle with us on this Absolutely. episode of Altitude. Thank yeah. you for no joining problem. us. No problem. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Thank you.